One is, my father was a behaviorist. He was working with rats and pigeons, teaching the pigeons to fly missiles, teaching them to sort mail. Um, and uh, he was working with uh, behavior in and of itself, very anti-social um, Darwinism, anti-genetic cause of behavior. It favored nature over, you know, for 99%. Just like some people think 99% of our behavior and personality is predetermined by our genes. Mm -hmm. I tend to think it's somewhere in the middle there, but uh, how do I say, um, he raised me in a Skinner box for five or six years, just to sleep and play. He let me out sometimes, but like, uh, <laughs> and he did some operant conditioning on me. It's kind of interesting. I, I knew a lot of colors of yarn. He would throw this thing out, and it had like 30 yarns, and he'd say, I was like only six or eight months old, and he'd say, go get me the e crew. And I'd pull it out and bring it to him, and he'd give me an M&M, &M. you know, <laughs> so. Come on. You too, oh, come yes, on. Yes, yes. When do you get a chance? <laughs> come on. Oh, this room, please. Oh, no, come on. Let's do the experts. The idea of uh, that animals in captivity. And a lot of the problem with enrichment, uh, whether it's for lab animals or for zoo animals, um, or for pets, or for domesticated humans, is that um, without something to enrich your life, without something to, to, to interest you, you end up with um, neurotic behavior. Often, you know, things like biting yourself or hurting yourself, or, and in particular in the zoo, People don't like to go to the zoo and see the polar bear pacing, endlessly pacing, you know, in a small space, or, you know, they don't like to see gorillas vomiting and then eating their vomit just to get a rise out of the crowd, or because they're actually really kind of sickened by the whole thing. And so there's a tendency to um, come up with ways to um, help animals at the very least, it's it's a it's to give them what they say here. This is a the animal enrichment. It's called an animalenrichment.org. It's actually Disney's Animal Kingdom theme park uh, program. At first, they want animals in captivity to exhibit naturalistic behavior. So they're actually consulting with ethologists and saying, how do we get them to behave like they would in nature? To give them control over their environment so they don't feel just like they're in jail, which they sort of are. Um, and, uh, like I said, to reduce their stereotypic abnormal behaviors. In zoos, we have lots and lots of endangered animals, and they want to breed them. Um, but they use breeding techniques that are really unusual for these animals. Not the kind they would use in the wild, because they want to collect sperm from gorillas. They actually, it's not so different from training. You know what I mean? They want to train the gorillas to give sperm in exchange for M&Ms. It's kind of Skinnerian thing. <laughs> and I have films, I actually have these great films from, from uh, another site, enrichment.org has a library of films of how to, how to get sperm from a gorilla. You know, how to train them to open up and put them, their penis in the hole and you know, but uh, these are difficulties that zookeepers have. I also relate this to the human condition. This is from New York, the designer liquidation sale, um, that we also live in captivity to some extent. Maybe this is like the human park debate. But right now, the state of enrichment in zoos is still in its infancy. It's very, very young. You know, they're giving rubber balls. Big, they're called boomer balls to like elephants. Bungee cord, you know, for a raccoon. The animals don't care about, you know, uh, design. They just, they just like it. What's that? Maybe in the future they develop some kind of space, you know. Well, I mean, I think it's up to us to see see what they prefer, whether they'd like a, a sort of a more advanced uh, setup, or, or whether a towel on bungee cords is really great, 
I mean, I don't know, I haven't been in one, but it sounds good. <laughs> Fire hose seems really popular in the zoos. And this is also important. A lot of times, they actually, like this is what it looks like behind the scenes of the zoo. It looks actually a lot like a lab. In the front, it might be trees, etc. And in the back, it's uh, balls and fire hoses, but also sometimes toys from the toy store and television and magazines, things like that for, for primates at least. Um, apparently, putting peanut butter far up into a tube and giving a stick to, to a higher primate keeps them busy for hours. Here's a possum playing with toys. They would never show this in the front, right? Because it's not naturalistic, but they do like it. <laughs> a long story. And then a lot of enrichment goes on during holidays, human holidays, like uh, Halloween or Christmas, you know, Sinterklaas, they, they get sort of like, you know, paper mache Christmas trees stuffed with meat. There seems to be a fetish for cardboard boxes. Like in other words, if you put the meat in the cardboard box, a big cat feels as if they're tearing open something. And it's better than just getting a bowl of meat. Really, because they, they, they feel like they're hunting a little. But once again, they just assume that the Pepsi box doesn't bother the lion. Um, we had a story of a uh, orangutan that was keeping pictures of Elmer Pearson under his pillow. He tore one out of the magazine, and they took it away. And then the next day, he tore out a picture of a red kitten and put it under his pillow. And um, the assumption was that, therefore, the orangutans like red-haired organisms, like themselves. My assumption, very Freudian maybe, was that the orangutan thought Elle McPherson was hot, was saving her picture for late night, for masturbation, and um, they took her away, and then he found the red kitten because he was um, suppressing, like actually, the zookeepers were repressing him, like sexually <laughs> sublimating into a kitten. Um, or maybe, maybe zoophilia is zoophilia, and whether it's a human or a cat, it's still kinky to an orangutan. But anyway, my class uh, came up with uh, a porn magazine for orangutans. Of orangutans. So they wouldn't have to resort to um, Does that look familiar? You know, you don't see a tiger doing this much, but he's backing it around. And inside there was rabbits, uh, dead rabbits, inside a pig. In the, uh, this guy got a, a rat pinata, and because he's an old lion with uh, his teeth had all fallen out, they use a like raw horse meat food product, <laughs> which is like uh, spam, you know, or uh, you know, ground up. But uh, he like tore it into. Um, and then we made this robot cat, <laughs> and this tiger actually. This tiger <coughs> made friends with it and wouldn't eat it. He was like, I think he recognized it as a cat, so we had to bring in another tiger who didn't make friends with it at all, but was sort of like, just wanted to eat it. Um, but then it played with its head. It's really interesting. Um, so, I'm going to give you just an idea of what usually my assignment is, and we're going to actually do, do some drawing. Um, the first idea is to think about animal, and I include non-human, because actually I think we're all non-human, all animals and non-animals are, I don't know, I can't even explain that one, but that I believe that there's consciousness everywhere. And so fungi have consciousness, protists have consciousness of some sort. You know, it may not be based on the same stuff that we have, but it's possible that we don't have as much as we think anyhow. But the first idea is designing for free living non-humans, um, which is just to try to, um, this is what I set up for Artist Zoo, and some of my students did things, um, to think about, and this is sort of why I brought you guys in, to think about who you are trying to enrich, in other words, you have to know your organism, and not from a human standpoint, but from a difference standpoint, in order to enrich them. You have to know what they want. You know, like the idea of uh, throwing bugs into a chicken coop is pretty good. You know, it's a fun thing for a chicken to be like, I'm gonna find these bugs that are hopping around, but you have to know what they eat. 
You have to know what they like. Um, giving animals control, um, how do I say? There's lots of different things, temperature controls, water flow, um, interspecies or even international communication. So like if some of your cosmopolitan chickens are in Washington and some of them are in Belgium, why not give them a video phone like a Skype connection? You know what I mean? So they can be like, how's it going in Washington? I, I did it here in Amsterdam, by yeah. the way. The opening in Washington, I was, uh, I was talking, I was talking for the opening here in, uh, in Amsterdam at the same time. So, but you're right, we can do it for the chicken as well. Yeah. Cool. And then um, a lot of what, maybe you guys can see on this, but when you're designing for different senses, most humans design first for visual and then second for sound. Then we get into audio-visual, it's a big new media thing. But most, most animals are, <coughs> you know, their first thing is like vibration and scent. You know what I mean? Warmth before what they can see or hear. Uh, and they may have a totally different spectra for their ears and for their eyes. And these are the type of things um, uh, that are, you know, you have to design for the full range of what an organism can enjoy, right? This was the first form, I kind of like forms, that I developed and I'll try to zoom in on. The idea was that you pick an animal that you would enrich and then you name the device that you would be uh, concept, you know, making the concept for. And then we would be asking for uh, a zookeeper's advice. But on this, in this, in this lab, we would be asking for your advice, your guys' advice. And then some of the different ways of enriching are giving new ways to play or problem solving, uh, group dynamics, you know, like a social enrichment. These are ideas also for future experiments for you, right? Different kinds of stress reduction, you, you know, uh, environmental controls for animals, like things that animals can do to change their own environment. Mixed species, they're only starting to do this in zoos, where they put in three or four different species together and let them have the interest of other species. It's quite lonely, I think, to be isolated as one species. Um, environmental architecture, and then these other senses, right? Your sound, your smell, your tactility, like your touch, what you different tastes. We don't know much about, say, for instance, taste buds on on a bird tongue. Do we know if they have bitter and sweet and salty, or if they have extra taste buds that we don't even know about? Right? Um, different temperatures, vibrations, vision. The animal consciousness is obviously a big question for me, but. Husbandry aids are kind of interesting, right? Like, uh, like you may be providing husbandry aids for these English chickens. Well, I don't know. I think besides that, I came up with this weird form, and you guys can take a look at this. This is an extension of this form, um, and it just asks these questions. Now, this form is based on the World Conservation um, Society (WCS). Yeah, they had one at their zoo that they gave me. And I, I tweaked it a little bit, so it gets consecutively more weird, actually, like the questions. But this is, these are the kind of questions I think an ethologist would be asking um, about how to enrich a new organism. Um, and sort of seeping in there is, a, there are different philosophical things. Um, for instance, there are some enrichment specialists that think that um, to enrich an animal is to give it a job. Like, animals want to work. It's a certain kind of, uh, you know, philosophy. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it's a question. So it's like, uh, should the non-human be kept busy or have work to do? Providing jobs for people is enrichment. It's a question. Um, but, uh, and then there's just questions like, uh, does the non-human have an avenue for revolt? In order to get good results on feeding experiments with animals, you have to make them hungry first. So you like limit their diet so that they're hungry, so that they respond to the test. Like your mealworm tests won't work if they're not hungry to begin with. So yeah. at least with his rats, they'd have hungry rats, and then they had some of the first computers with the banana plugs, you know, 
and this computer would randomly drop grain, one grain at a time. One at a time, but randomly from the top of the cage, and they had 20 cages and 20 different rats, and they dropped one at a time, but they covered the cages so that the rat didn't get any influence from the outside. And um, they left them there for a week, and then at the end of the week, they raised all the cages. And each rat was doing something different, superstitious, that they thought made the grain come from the sky. So one rat was going like this. <laughs> and the grain would come, you know, so they knew it was working after a week. And the other one was going, you know, like this, over and over, because that was the system that worked. And they had come up with it themselves in isolation. It was the humana humana. I'm not sure how much of human behavior isn't exactly that. Because the rewards <laughs> from the world, you know, there's an abundance in the world, but you know, sometimes you get more and sometimes you get less. There's no punch. And yeah, there's no, there's actually, there's no order to some extent to actual living. And so a lot of what we're doing, I think, is, is based on, it seems to be working. You know, like I'll fill up my car and I'll go down there because there's an ATM and it seems to be working but it's all based on some ritual. So that's, that's my addition. What I would hope is we look at these questions, and there's only a few of us, but I'm gonna have you guys do it too, because I got art materials and paper, and we take some time to think about chickenness and draw up what we can do to enrich a chicken. And then we're gonna have you guys take a look at what we draw, and even we'll look at each other's and uh, um, figure out what's wrong, right, or funky about um, our ideas. Okay, so I'll put this down. Uh, and they invited scientists to come up with ideas to, uh, to do sort of science in Hong Kong and science. Uh -huh. So you can use the, the people that come there uh, as, as your guinea pigs. As your research and animals. Yeah, and we're thinking of like doing really behavioral tests on these humans that are normally done on animals. Uh -huh. uh, and try to see if you can then find human traits in right. these animal tests. Oh, wow, so set up some big artificial trees and stuff. You know, this is the weird thing. In science, you can't do that with having them, without them signing a human subject form. Yeah, so that's what they have to do there as well. But if you do it as performance art, then nobody, you know, you can do endless psychological and behavioral experimentation um, without human subject forms as long as it's art. Uh, yeah, but yeah. then you can't publish it in scientific journals or in a lot of behavioral scientific journals because they ask for, uh, for like numbers of, of uh, yeah. Yeah. the protocols that you yeah. Uh, well, that's what it looks like, chicken. All right, <laughs> uh, maybe I'll switch back to chicken now. No, it's still that one. Not the red one? Yeah, I can bring it. Not the red one. Yeah, it's good.
Do you need to trade colors? I'm okay. Oh, you have nice red pen. Second project is um, making a piece of art for a chicken. Right? Like a, what? What? Because we might go to your chickens. Maybe they can, we can give some art to them. Yes. Yeah. So what would you make for a chicken? Does a non-human have good posture? Does what? Where did that come from? What did it say? Does the non-human have good posture? Oh, well, I mean, it's an artistic questionnaire, but uh, um, good posture. Well, I mean, because then you can enrich them by through yoga, okay. or or give them, you know, like a lumbar support chair or something. It depends. It's very good. You can't be a chicken, so you can be in the process of being a chicken. That's why I need you off. Yeah, right? As a chicken. <laughs> Don't push my turn. Keep it so long. That's a chicken eye, a golden chicken eye. And this is some kind of wheat corn. But this is, what's that thing we sent to outer space? Like the message to the aliens? I realize I don't know who the chickens are, so we have to send them like a message to the aliens. Hello, we are humans, we live on Earth. Yeah. Do chicken see in color? Does anybody know? Yeah. Infrared. Oh, cool. And they uh, they hardly see the other spectra, but they have four cones instead of three. Birds have four cones. We only have three. Like CMYK, but no, I'm kidding. No, they have four colors instead of RGB or whatever. Yeah. Colors, yeah. Or, or you, or you, or So we 
we need UV colored pens. We have, but we won't see it. Okay, so there's UV <laughs> coming off of our pages, but we don't know where it is. Yeah. Huh. All right. So you need glasses. Yeah. That's the... To see like a chicken. Should we look at each other's art and ask questions? Is anybody ready? What about, what's this one? Uh, oh well, um, it was a mirror and around the frame of the mirror is uh, LED lights which kind of glow in different colors mm -hmm. and then they're on a, fr on a layer on top of the LED lights is a uh, tasty something or other that the chicken can eat or lick. Uh huh, around the LEDs, like a halo Kind of as a, like a layer over top. Oh nice. In the middle is a mirror so the chicken can watch itself. I don't know. Well, that's all right, but what what kind of food do you know? Uh, no, I have no idea what chickens like to eat. Actually, I discovered as I was doing this form. What's the range of chicken yums? Uh, yummy tasty. <laughs> First of all, anything that moves. That's with <laughs> protein. Worms somehow stuck on it. Then. Worms and bugs. Yeah. You're gonna glue them to the LEDs. That's very bio art. It's very popular <laughs> these days. <laughs> Worm and bug torture, yeah. But actually, you can also put. It could like, be something else other than LEDs. Do they eat sugar? Do they no. like to lick things? Like no. They eat corn. Right? They eat corn. They they like to peck at things. Yeah. Nice. Right. And then um, we'll we'll we're gonna talk about how these work for chickens. But what's this one? This is crazy. Well, I always wanted an igloo, but then when I thought I might get an igloo, um, the whole bird flu thing came out. And then we have foxes in our back garden. So that's kind of sort of my back garden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, at first I was going to do the squirrel because I didn't really follow your instructions. Oh, well, that's all right. Yeah. So basically, when I, when, I, <laughs> when I walk along this path, there's always these squirrels that are eating and they're dropping things from the trees. And, they never hit me. I don't know how they do it. Yeah. So I thought it'd be quite cool to create a squirrel maze, which then the squirrel would take out the food and drop it for the chicken. But I've since discovered that chickens only like to eat things no. that move. They also. prefer so things that move, but they also mm. eat. They eat a lot of grains, of course. Mm. But if they see, if you want to enrich their food only, then I would take them to move. Yeah. To. Well, this is my really great drawing. That's the igloo, yeah. and then there's the run chicken. Room. That's all right. I think uh, to give it the mirror. To see itself, you know, mm -hmm. that's. Uh, I think that's very interesting for the chicken, you know, that, uh, that, that they can. And I, I forgot how you formulate your second question. To, uh, I don't remember either. Let me think. Um, art, for the art for the chicken. Yeah, that's an art for the chicken, you know. Yeah. It's a, and mm -hmm. uh, from my thinking, of course, because my thinking is involved in this drawing, it's yeah. like you know, I take the chicken as a piece of art in itself. So if if, if the chicken can watch its uh, itself, you know, then then it becomes a piece of art. It has a, a, it's its own art. It's, yeah. it's its own art. So so the chicken doesn't know that it is art. It's like and if you take it as a metaphor for human beings, you know, we are art. Mm -hmm. So if we watch ourselves into the mirror, we are art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the piece. There's a cutoff point supposedly where which organisms can recognize themselves in the mirror. Yeah. You know, uh, okay. like a, they've shown that dolphins can. They do this experiment where they put a dot on the side of them and they look in the mirror and they go like this. Ah, okay. What is they, that? They, 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 watch, they watch, they watch. Yeah, and, uh, but if you put a mirror for a tiger, they attack. Well, I think the, the, the rooster as well, he will, yeah. he will for sure attack the other one because yeah. he's thinking that's another one. But for the female, I don't think so. The female will be... Um, I know, I know what the female does. Yeah, yeah. but it's, it's not proud or something. But it's just looking. Yeah, it's curious. Checking out. Yeah, checking out. Who is it? You know, first of all, when we look in the mirror, do we see ourselves correctly? You know, and second of all, like, uh, do we who, like it? Yeah, do we like it? And then, who's to say that self-recognition is important? Yeah. You know, for every animal is great in its own niche, you know, well, has its own way. Mm -hmm. Whereas if my dog, if it hears its name on the television, it knows it's its name and it gets really excited. Uh -huh. So I think it's just dependent on the chicken, what the chicken uses to identify itself with. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So which art will you give it? It's, it's like saying if, if the chicken notices that it is a piece of art, then he becomes an artist in himself. Mm -hmm. So uh, he probably doesn't know. Yeah. So 
this is this is the difference between human and and chicken. Yeah. Until now, this was an answer to the second question. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's art for uh, for a chicken, but it should be something that they can use. Uh, so it's so, sort of like a game art. Uh, it has something with with colors and and um, and, and different dots and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's also sort of a game, so they have to touch something here, then they have to go around here, and they have to find the same the same pattern mm -hmm. here, and then uh, step on this one, and then they get food. Oh, nice. One thing is, of course, if you, if you have a chicken, his eyes are here. Mm -hmm. So you can make two, two things at the same time. Uh, well, the, the blue is sort of the ultraviolet. Uh -huh. And uh, I would say art for a chicken is the same as daily life. That's food and sex. Yeah. That's... But that's Very simple. They, yeah, but they can do both at the same time. Yeah. Uh, first, I thought to enhance the life of a chicken, I think they, when I see the chickens, they like to scratch <laughs> like this. <laughs> so we <laughs> enhance their feet so they Even can. Big scratchers. Yeah, do really big scratches. Mm -hmm. And what they also like to do is uh, sit in the dust and shake off these fleas yeah. uh -huh. and lice. So to have sort of a, something that helps them to give a real good wash, like oh, fans <laughs> and dust. Yeah, a big fan blowing everything off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And they just step on the little uh, on uh -huh. switch. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you. What's yeah, <laughs> this one. This one is uh, for the chicken. It's art for the chicken. And I don't know why I started with a chicken eye, because you showed a photo of a chicken eye. I made a golden eye, probably some James Bond shit. Yeah. But, um, and then a large, a giant piece of wheat. And then I realized that I don't even understand chicken perception at all. Senses I might not understand, but even perception, like once you, all right, this is the range of senses, but how do they perceive that? So I started making a grid that was wavy because I was trying to figure out chicken perception, like how they would appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that space communication thing we sent into outer space, you know, with the man and the woman, and the, like where we are in the, that, we might as well send it to a chicken too, <laughs> right? I mean, in some ways, they're aliens yeah, to yeah. us, and, and they're, they're sort of like, here's a, so not that, I don't understand that drawing. You the Adam and Eve stuff also. To I, get the, I guess, but I don't understand that image that much, you know, yeah. like with all the lines. Like if I got that, if I was roaming around outer space and I got that, I'd just be like, it's a nice piece of art. Yeah. I wouldn't Great. necessarily go and try and find Earth. I always wonder why the guy shaved in the picture. It's more of a fashion statement, isn't it, that mm. we send out? <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. And the woman has no vagina. It's tough. Oh, gee. Yeah. Tough. Yeah. Those aliens. <laughs> it's the first thing they'll ask, how yeah. will they reproduce? The chicken trail feet excrement dust trail. I don't remember what that one was for. I, I know when people want to shit, they usually do a special run. You know, like away. Mm. Um, but like, do chickens just shit? Or do they like say, I'm gonna shit? No. They just do it. The, the, the chickens, they just do it. Like I have in my, in my field, there are also running llama. The llama is going to a specific place, always to the same place. Mm -hmm. But the chicken, mm -mm, no. Chicken mm -hmm. is like uh, shit and eat at the same time. But do they have a... Also, do they also have sex and food, I mean, everything is there. And, you know, everything happens on the same time and it's go very fast. <laughs> All the things. The special shit thing is that the shit, when they're scared and fly away, yeah. Just to uh -huh. get yeah, rid of some weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a general. Uh, yesterday we did uh, the photo shooting. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of shit there. Yeah. <laughs> from the flashes, yeah. Yeah, from the flashes. Yeah, yeah. 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 they're quite cool to catch it in kind of transit. <laughs> Strobe shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but what about, um, do they ever shit when they're mad? Like they, they look at the other one and go, mm, when they're No, fighting. I didn't notice. The, the only thing is fear. Yeah. When there is fear, they shit. For years, for years, they have a special attraction in, uh, uh, with with chickens. They they had it in a cage, and uh, so they played different music. And the chicken was dancing on the music. But the trick was very tricky. You know what they did? They were heating the plate, oh. and the chicken was like. <laughs> 
uh, that's, that's, that's really me, you know. Yeah. And then from the moment I have an installation with an empty incubator where there is the sound of little chicks are coming out of the mm. transparent incubator and it's going like cheep, 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 cheep. So they start immediately to, to get around, to look around, to, to, so they like it. Also, there is also a misunderstanding a lot because if I, if I expose my chickens somewhere, you know, it's always like, do we have to cover the cage if the opening is here and all this kind of question. No. Chickens who are domesticated, they like it when their people come because this is social, it's a social animal. Uh -huh. They are used to humans. Yeah. There is a lot of misunderstanding in this, in these things. Mm. So you combine song and personality and you found out that fast birds sing differently from slow birds. Uh -huh. So females can really just listen to their song and think, okay, over there, 100 meters apart, there's a fast guy. Oh, They're a bit I, more like gangster rap, probably. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have like a, a, a more different song, so they can they can oh, yeah. they have more melodies within a certain type of song. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're more variable. Then yeah. the personality is is personality correlated with song? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. But it's, so and it's not that that every female chooses one song type, so they, they choose different song types. Mm. And they always thought that's because some females just choose males that are, are lower quality. But it, it's not the case, it's because they have different personalities. Mm. So they, they, they what, what I think is interesting, and we, we didn't mention this today, uh, but you're always coming to the same, same point, is the female who makes the choices. Yeah. Uh -huh, female choice. Always. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And then females, Females choose a mate, and they they fight one to yeah. one with a female, maybe. But it's always the females that choose. That's uh, mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Well, I think sexual selection has been focused mostly on the idea of female choice, and it's it's quite interesting. A woman choose uh, mostly for a creative man. Mm -hmm. So also that's a great answer in what your lecture was like, uh, saying that that there is no a good slow and a good fast. Um, it's a, it's a, being creative is like uh, choosing uh, on the moments that you have to be fast, you have to be fast on the moments that you have to slow, yeah? that's creativity. Yeah. So the, most of the, the female is choosing for that, for creativity man, not the one who's going very fast in the war, you know, yeah. shooting down yeah, and then finish. Yeah. But there are females who like boring men, yeah, it's luckily. <laughs> yeah, there's actually, I mean, I, I learned a lot of this from, um, what do I say, uh, from sperm competition books. There's these sperm competition books and... It's good you qualified it with the books part. Yeah, well, you know, I, you know that um, many times women will become actually not just allergic, but like resistant to a regular redundant partner's sperm. You know, like their, their common partner and then a sneaky, charming mailman will snock on the door and then there's some fast love and that sperm gets in right away because there's less defense, like less, they're less used to it, yeah. mm -hmm. their body. But there's also kamikaze sperm. In other words, like if you get, many animals have sex with multiple partners mm -hmm. and then the sperm fight. Yeah. And there are actually some sperm will go head to head, like wow. against another sperm, they stick and they commit suicide to let their other brother sperm or sister sperm get ahead. I also just learned that the placenta is mainly male tissue. Oh yeah? Yeah. Oh. And it's the placenta who, who sort of decides how the energy flows go to, oh, yeah. the, to the mother and to the, to the offspring. I, I sort of heard a story that roosters can uh, have, are sensitive, sensitive to light. Uh -huh. So I thought maybe build a nice lamp that can shine different lights and he can choose. Yeah. Cool. And yeah, the clock? The, yeah, the clock. They are, yeah, in the morning, the, the, the sun comes up, so that's the normal <laughs> time that the but light the starts. Light but now the clock sort is related to the light. Mm, when I make drawings, um, a lot of them show the unicorn on top of the, of the pig. Uh, so the little chick has it to break the egg, you know. Uh -huh. Oh, that's or, right, it falls yeah, off after why, why not giving it a, a unicorn forever and hopefully in the future it can be uh, it, it can be uh, in a biological um, uh, in a biological way they can give it further to each other you know mm -hmm. that's uh -uh. I don't know how you would do it well if you put the unicorn thing in the middle it doesn't know it's there even though it is there that's the opposite of what you said mm. Mm. right mm. I like what you said oh, better. so would it be able to see it 
It would know. Would it, know? it would know it was there, but it can't see it. No, no, it's, uh, he's not able to see it because, yeah. But if you make it long enough, you can see it in that point. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. So you no. were saying the opposite, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Thinking yeah. If, uh, we know all these things, like um, in terms of a a chicken's identity, how much is it tied up into its visual kind of rather than pro? What is it? Procio, propio, proprioception. Yeah. yeah. Because of the eyes are standing uh, on the side. It's able to see everything, you know, it's able to see the world. And that's why mo normally a chicken originally is a vegetarian, you know. And most of the animals who have the, who have the eyes on the side are vegetarian. Mm -hmm. The other ones who have the eyes in the front, like we, are attacking and eating meat. So it's this kind of uh, um, thing from the nature to protect, you know. And, uh, but... But of course, there are there are uh, exceptions like the eagle, and that's why I'm showing also in my um, in my lecture like the eagle and the chicken. It's the power and the strength. If you bring power and strength together, so p power is more has more to do with, with with taking than making. You know, the chicken is more on the side of helping. But if you did something which was allowing the chicken to see the world in a different way, which is kind of what art is for, isn't it? So, if it sees an ultraviolet, can you show it? an ability to see the world like another type of species but, or different. But we give already the chicken a lot, huh, by the mm. way, but we, we change it from, from, from mm. uh, vegetarian into cannibal, you know? Mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> mm. oh. It just change. Yeah? Most uh, species are not vegetarians, they're omnivores, but they... Yeah. they, but they have, have most of the... well, no. no. The there are hardly any real vegetarians, because okay. they, they always try to get some some proteins in and even if you have like pure vegetarians what we think of vegetarians if you make them choose between easy approachable uh, protein rich food yeah. they will choose that okay. they always like it more because it's yeah. it's easier uh, <laughs> about pigeons and, and birds in the city because uh, you have all these fruits hanging on the trees and they don't eat them when you no. When you go and pick berries, people say, oh, you shouldn't do that because you should leave them for the birds, but they don't eat them. No. They're, they're probably eating something. Yeah. So protein. The, you have bird species that are, are really specialized on berries, uh, but that's other birds and, and pigeons. And so mm. it's, um, I, I took my kids to the university uh, museum in, in Utrecht, and one of the things they had was, uh, was glasses for humans to to show them what a chicken sees. So you oh. just have two yeah. mirrors like this, mm. so you can only see this. Uh -huh. So you should be able to make something for a chicken that it can <laughs> see. It exists for chickens, but, but you know why it exists? It exists that they don't attack, the, it, attack each other on, uh, on taking the feathers. So what, this, what, what we give it is the opposite, not to help it, not to enrich it, yeah. not to give it an enrichment, but, but just to be confused. But we can make one who never confused, you know, who's really given given the the it's view, the, the total view, uh -huh. also that mixed point, you know. Mm -hmm. um, is there a schizophrenic bird? Of, of course. I mean, I I think I think that I saw already sick mm -hmm. chickens in the head. I mean, who attacks? Who, who kill? Who? Is it sick? I don't know. Maybe it's simply nature. Uh, but but I, you, you see crazy ones who are fighting to themselves, uh -huh. uh, who, would, uh, who are, are taking their feathers out. I mean, yeah. this, is, this is more uh, the crazy stuff, I guess. Yeah. But they are there. I mean, it's, um, I shouldn't say this, but if you have like personality variation, you also have personality disorders. Yeah. Um, you also have them in the wild, but you don't see them because they will die. Mm -hmm. uh, we are sort of maintaining this variation because we are taking care mm -hmm. of all the weaker people. Uh -huh. I shouldn't say that we shouldn't, but this yeah. is sort of why we keep on getting this variation. Yeah. And it's so there's a whole bunch of psychological research that was done in the 70s, 60s uh -huh. on mood. Yeah. And oh, there's still a lot done on, on positive, uh, positive mood and positive emotions and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, I, th I think it's difficult to translate that to you to non-human human animals yeah, yeah. because mood is, it is how you feel and then you come with this yeah. consciousness again. Yeah. I made a Milgram experiment. I made a big red throne for a chicken. That's just for comfort, like king chicken. And then there's a button that it can push. Obviously not with its wing, but maybe its beak or foot. But um, and it makes a human scream every time it pushes it. <laughs> 
That one's for you. Work it in. So they can, you can be screaming remotely for the chicken at request. Well, I've, I've been talking about that uh, this morning when I came here. Like uh, in, in zebra finches, they, they found zebra finches have an orange uh, patch here, mm -hmm. and females choose uh, mates along this, this patch. Um, what we do is to individually recognize birds is we put uh, bands on their, their legs oh. and they have different colors and what they found was that uh, when they did mate choice experiments nothing matched only the color of the of the the leg rings matched with with the mm. choice of the females it's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, so i think when they had red and orange uh, it, they were they were like preferred and green they were not preferred something like that Right. But so, I, I, with the rooster is the rat in the hat who yeah. is uh, impressive for uh -huh. the for the female and also that's impressive for I the fight. Maybe that's what you did. Big one. Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's right. That's that's yeah. that's. Yeah, the that's, prosthetic we call it a comb. Yeah, the prosthetic the comb. If you, if, comb. You, if you make that like this, I mean, this is it prestigious. Might. And you see this with the pheasants, for example, the pheasant. Uh, when there is the the matting season, you know the the the, 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 the rat is is is, yeah. is is become the double of what it is. So also the chicken has their um, and it's like a signal, you know, rat. Well, let's let's all think about something like this. Uh, this is a signal, but the rest of the body is also a signal. So if you if you might do this, you might expect that this bird will become like the guy in the, in the population, but the rest of his body signals that it's not right. Yeah. So females will think that's that's something is that's a cheater. And then, <laughs> uh, so that's so they cool. they will see that. Yeah. But that's so you see, and it's very interesting. You see the pheasant is changing his feathers. You know he's doing the feathers on one side, and then it's like one wall mm -hmm. full of colors. You know, mm -hmm. and then the female is like impressed by all this color. But then if the guy is not doing well. And you see this in captivity, the, and the hen, and the hen is able to see the dark side because you know if the if the if the the, the male is doing all the feathers on one side, that means on the other side he's ugly. Uh, you know, he's yeah. very ugly. If the female get that interest there and, 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 and get it, then he said you're cheating. This is not you're not the right guy. And then she doing she's behaving exactly like the guy. So she's turning like this. And then they start to fight oh. it's the, instead of having the the matting. Yeah, yeah. It's very interesting. It's, wow. it's, it's beautiful. For me, it's clair obscur Rembrandt. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All one side. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's well lit on one side. Uh, no, on, well, on one on one side they, they can choose whatever they do on this side. This is really loud and it, it's got some visual input. And here it's like it's they have got something on their heads and they, they oh, have yeah. no input at all. Uh, so they can choose there. Uh, here they can they can choose uh, between a more green area or a real grey area. Mm -hmm. uh, they can also choose to stay in circles or go somewhere else. Um, here they meet something which which is well is questionable. They can choose to either go ahead or the surprise or, or yeah, it's sort of surprise. Here they're told that they shouldn't go there, so you can see whether they <laughs> they, they have a choice to to obey or to disobey. Um, they can also choose between areas where there's more space and where there's less space. Uh, here there's more variation in, in, in color where they walk on, so they can maybe stay there for a bit. So it's just a choice chamber. I've, I've studied macaws as well, and that's, I just looked at them for hours just playing in the wild. Uh -huh. It's really cool, just a pair, it was just playing and, and allopreening and preening. And what do they do for playing? They, uh, they hang on, on branches with one foot and the other one is pecking the other one on the foot. On the foot and then they're, uh -huh. yeah, they're kind of laughing yeah, it's, it's, in their own way. Oh. Yeah, mm. so it's really... But with, with chickens the fight goes on, you know? The, yeah, that's also great. Greatest yeah, in, the fight chicken. goes on. Yeah, greatest in chicken is, is similar. So they have these, these stable hierarchies which will always change, yeah. of course, but there is some sort of a hierarchy. You know who's the boss, you know who is, who's there, and they try to get, get higher, mm -hmm. but in, in, in like uh, the, the sort of more social systems, uh, th they just tolerate each other. Mm -hmm. But it's all based on food there. I think. <laughs> exactly, there is, there is a certain play in, in, in chicken, that is that they, uh, they toss stones 
instead mm. of and that's sort of mm. to learn what is food and what is not oh, food. Yeah. Yeah. And that you can call it play. But it's, but it's our play, you know. Exactly. It's on play. play. Yeah. There's this really good book called um, Animal Play by Burkhart. Mm. Have you seen it? Mm. It, it itemizes out all the typologies of play and animals. Well, it could but be. as far as I can that's see in my garden, I don't see a lot of play there. Yeah. I see a lot of fight, competition. What about, yeah. They don't feel like sorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I lost. No, they don't. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> is this art by the chicken? Yeah, this is art by the chicken. But anyway, I translate again myself into the into this uh, uh, process, and I think uh, mm -hmm. I, I think if chicken make art, it's like a, a, a chaos uh, with a certain order. And um, I think also when I do this, uh, I, make, I make chaos in a certain order. So maybe uh, when, when we should allow chickens to make some art, there comes something out of it. But I, I mean, besides of this, and it comes by coincidence, I think this one is maybe the closest one to the, to the chicken because it was destroyed the paper and eat it. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, <laughs> it's that like, one by you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Cool. So, and I think, yeah, it's together, I mean, it fits. It's we can so go together. there and we can present, if we want, mm -hmm. some of these art pieces to the chickens if you want some eat them. I also, I got some gifts. I don't know, maybe this is the last thing we do is tell me. If, so, tell me, at the same time, if any of this is like actually helpful for a chicken. So, like, if we give this to your chicken, A, is it good for the chicken, and B, is it shitty for the art? <laughs> you know? Shitty for the art, actually, for sure. This football. Does a chicken want a football? Does a chicken want a rubber duck? I doubt. What about this? Well, I think this the is the good one. one. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, the chicken will, will start to yeah. and, and, and the sound. Yeah. Well. But to be honest, they, if, will, they will not touch it, I guess. What if we put this stuff inside the inner ball? so that they have to move the ball around to get the grain out. Is that, is you, that, think, you think that the pet stuff will help? Do you think, well, no, I'm asking, I mean... That is helping, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> what about, I mean, this is a parakeet candy bar. <laughs> Do you think that helps? Or we can, we can hang these from bungee cord. Huh? What about this, um, this hammer? Chicken. Chicken dance. I don't know. I'm, I'm I, you know, I'm just feeling <laughs> this out. Sausage. <laughs> <laughs> this is maybe for eggs. You know, this is like this is a, a porto nest. Yeah. So this one, like this one wins. This one, this one wins. This is a maybe, huh? This is a maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure that this win. I mean, I think the color is too fleshy for them. Maybe I don't know. I don't know if it wins. Zie je de verschillende generaties? Mechelse koekoek, Mechelse bres, Mechelse redkap, Mechelse giant, Mechelse drezen, Mechelse uilbaar, Mechelse Louisiana, Mechelse fighter, Mechelse orakana, Mechelse longkrauer, Mechelse kubalaya. En in, de, in het kot zit de Mechelse ancona met, met, de, Russen, met de Russen en ja. die brengen dan de Mechelse orlof. It's, uh, it's the whole generation, and there is the whole generation the same is stuffed. Cuckoo, poulet de bres, mechelse bres, you know. And, and, and so the line is going, going, going until the cage. And the cage is the actual breeding. We cannot enter the cage because it's uh, locked. That's okay. <laughs> but so you have to do it in front of the... Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Let's see. Like and make little chicken noises like
Russians like cake. <laughs> yeah, this, you know, you see, oh, wow. this it's one like goes, <laughs> but he thinks it's food, I guess. <laughs> Russians can say pop. What they call. That's from Richmond. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. 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 Hmm.